Everybody's wrong. Rewrote the song. Thoughts become action. Tell me what's happening. Wish your mind wrapped in a wrapped around. Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to create this interlaced lettering style effect. So this is quite a popular style that I've seen quite a few times actually and I only just recently decided I'll try and do it myself. And it appears that quite a lot of my followers actually really really like this. I mean my last two posts on my Instagram have actually been my two most liked posts ever. So before we get into the tutorial, I just want to quickly show you this font which I've made and this is my first font. It's a hand drawn sans serif font which comes with just capital letters and it'll be primarily used for like vintage slash retro kind of logos or advertising and to give you a bit of an example of how this font could be used I've included a few images which show you some rough examples so here this is just the actual advertisement I used for the font itself here shows the alphabet numbers punctuation and symbols and then these bottom two are examples of like logos like vintage retro sort of like rustic kind of logos so you have those two so that just gives you a bit of an idea of how this font could be used and what sort of results you can expect to get from it you can buy this font which is called venture you can buy this on creative market for three dollars and i'll leave a link to that in the description if, in case any of you are interested now let's move to the tutorial so first thing you're going to obviously need is a piece of type that you're going to go around so in this example here, as you can see, this is only a very, very rough piece of lettering. It's not neat, it's very rushed. So that's all you need. You just need a basic template to work with. So I've got this here, which says inter, because I'm going to write interlaced, since that's the style of lettering that it is. So once you've pasted in your image, and for this example, I've just taken a picture with my phone, sent it to my email, and dragged it in. So you don't need a scanner for this. You can just simply use your phone. So once you've put it in, you're going to double click on the layer, hit dim image to 50%, OK lock your layer what you're going to do is you're going to set your stroke to just a random color for now and you're just going to basically go around this using horizontal and vertical points like this so i'm just going to quickly just do this first letter just as an example because i've already actually vectorized this to save time for the video so let me just drag this over so, and this does take a bit of trial and error to get this to get these curves nice and smooth so once you once you're happy once you've all your type and you've got it there what you're going to do is come over to stroke and if you haven't got this over on the right you're just going to come up to window come down to stroke and it'll open up in the panel and yours will probably look like this so if it looks like this just hit these three lines and click show options when this comes up where it says cap you're going to click on the rounded cap for there and then the corner you're going to go for the rounded corner as well once you have that you're just going to bump up the size so it roughly matches the image underneath so just ch change the weight so let's bump that up to say about 15 that looks about fine Oops, that's 18 yeah 15 looks about right so we'll keep it at 15 so once you've done all that you can then move on to your actual type so here I've already vectorized it all and you know made it all neat and tidy so at this stage you're now going to make it look 3d with the blend tool and I just want to shout out Ian Barnard for this because I actually watched his tutorial on how to do this so I'm by no means trying to rip him off I want to give him full credit for this this is how I found out to do it so um, this is this stage of it to make it 3D and then the next stage of interlacing it and all that sort of stuff that wasn't in his tutorial that's what I want to show you so I'm trying to quickly go through this bit to get it out of the way so what you're gonna do is come over to the shape tool get, get the circle tool and we're gonna put it as a gradient fill oops that's the outline there we go so you've got a gradient fill and by default yours will probably, black, probably be black and white so once you once you select your circle come over to your gradient and this will be zero by default so let's say these are all black and white and what you want to do is preferably have more than two colors otherwise it won't really look that 3d so what I like to do is put a lighter color on each side and then in the center you put a slightly darker color or a darker shade and once you have your circle all you're gonna do is click hold alt and shift and drag and let go and then just hit command D or control D if you're on PC do that, just do that several times so you've got quite a few of them there like this and all you're going to do is highlight them all come up to object blend make and um, yours won't do this by default because I've already done it today so once you have that it'll stay the same it'll just add a few more circles but then what you're going to do is come down to blend and then blend options and yours will be on smooth color so you're going to click on that bring it down to specific steps and I just put this up to a thousand that's the highest you can go just make it as smooth as possible but it does take up quite a lot of memory so um, maybe you could probably have that around 500 but I'm just going to keep it at 1000 for now so once you have that I'm just going to again hold alt and shift click and drag and then 
Command D and duplicate this several times so we've got plenty of copies of this because we're going to have to use all these. Right, so that's lagging a bit. See, it's quite a lot of memory it's taken up. So what you're going to do now is, let me just unlock this layer. So you're going to click onto your path of the letter that you want to do. Make sure you've always got one of these spare as well because you, you might need to duplicate it again if you, haven't, if you haven't already done enough of them. So you're going to select both of these, come up to Object, Blend, Replace Spine. And as you can see that now puts it onto this shape. And if you have any little glitches like this, all you're going to do is come to the Direct Select tool, select the circle, don't select the path in the middle that bit, you want to select the actual circle. Don't click on the actual path of the circle, you actually click on the circle itself. And then just hit Backspace to delete it. And then again with this one, where it's messed up again, delete that. And there you go, that's that sorted. And now let's go to the next letters. So I'll just throw this on onto this one, object, blend, replace spine. And I'll just quickly delete these and then show you what else you can do. So I'll just delete that circle there where it's glitched. That circle. Anywhere else? No, it looks fine. So what you can do is you can click on these and then go to object, blend, and then reverse front front to back. So as you can see, that's now inverted everything, like the colours. So now this line's in front of this line, which wasn't a second ago. So I'm just going to keep it as it was for now. Okay, so now that I'm at this point, um, I'm just going to make these two circles here. So what I'm going to do is just hold Alt, sorry, hold Command and click on the actual circle here. Just do Command C, Command V, paste it down somewhere there. And I'm just going to drag this over this circle and then delete the grey one. So duplicate that, do the same with this. So now you can see you've got that effect. Uh, the only one issue here is you can, I, well, I don't know a way of placing this between that since that's one shape. I'm not really sure how you'd go about putting that in between, but you can do that on Photoshop. So once you have it finished in Illustrator, you're going to come to Photoshop and you're going to create a new document. I'm going to make mine 1920 by 1080 pixels with 300 DPI. Create, and then you're going to paste in your type. I'd recommend pasting it as a, in as a smart object, but for the sake of it not lagging, I'm going to paste it in as pixels. And that's probably, if, if I was doing it without recording as well, I'd probably be doing it on a much bigger document too. But this is just for the sake of it not lagging. So I'll just paste that in. And now we can add the other type to it. But first we're going to actually make the background darker just to make it a bit easier to see. So you're going to set your secondary colour here to a dark grey or a black. And I'm just going to hit Command Backspace on the background layer, and that'll fill the background. So as you can see already, it's looking quite nice. And what we're going to do now is add the other type. So this is going to say Laced, all caps. The, obviously, this the font choice here is completely up to you, but I'm just going to use Century, which is a font that I've used for all of these so far. And I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger, so roughly the same size as the actual type that I'm working on. So in fact, let me drag this in just as a bit of a reference so we can see what we're trying to achieve. Okay so once you have your two pieces of type overlaid over each other like this, what you're going to do is come to the this type here that you've um, just created in Illustrator and you're going to put a mask on this by selecting this little box down here. So make sure you've got this selected and then you're going to come down to the T on the type tool, the little symbol here and make sure you're holding command or control if you're on PC. Select that, and as you can see, it now highlights all of that type. And make sure you're now on the mask layer here. Make sure this is selected. You've got your brush tool, which is B on the keyboard, once you've selected this. And you see your colors are now black and white. So if it's a black, so you can press X on your keyboard to switch these two colors here around. So you press X and they switch around. So if you use black, you'll see that it actually gets rid of whatever's underneath. But if you use X, it will paint it back in again. If you press X, it will change your colour to white. So what you can now start to do is to paint away part of the type that you created in Illustrator. And this is where you can start to get that overlay effect. So let's get rid of... You have to be very picky with specific parts. And it does take a bit of trial and error to try and get it to work properly and make it look right. So let's get rid of that bit. And you just have to do a bit of close work here. So I'll go a bit closer in and just make sure I get rid of these. And what else could we get rid of? So let's get rid of this. So the C's coming up the front of that. And let's get rid of, yeah, let's get rid of that as well. See how that works. 
As for the E, let's get rid of this middle bit. So the center of the E is coming through the E. And we'll have this in front. And we'll have these in front as well. And then we'll have this behind. So I'm not trying to get this exactly the same as the other version which I've made. I'm pretty sure I've done some other parts different, but yeah, that's just roughly. In fact, let's just make this A a bit more visible. So that's something you need to do as well. You need to keep zooming out, zooming back in, just making sure like every letter is visible and you can actually read what it says. So there we go. Let's just deselect that with Command D. And I think what needs to happen is the crossbar in the A needs to be selected. It needs to be removed. So let's hit Command. Make sure you've got this selected. Hit Command and press T. And I'm just going to, oops, not delete that bit, but delete that bit. And then, in fact, I could paint this back in, so I'll press X to switch the colours. And paint that back in. See, this is um, one of the issues as well. If you're slightly off, then you'll notice that it pokes over just a tiny bit. So I'm just going to see if we can get away with this. I'm not sure if we will, but let's see how that looks. I think we'll get away with that, to be honest. If it leaves little marks like this at the end, just come back and maybe don't just don't have it all selected, just do it like this and it'll get rid of it for you. Okay, so the next stage would be to add the highlights because as you can see on these, it has these little highlights here which actually gives it a bit more of a 3D effect. So these are things that you actually add in Illustrator afterwards. So let's just quickly add these and you'll only add these on the lighter parts of the actual type. So let's say like here where it comes around the curve, that'd be highlighted, be a highlight here, down the side. So I'll just quickly go through and add these. And what you want to do is create a new layer, get your brush tool out, make sure you get the hardness at 100% and the size will depend on the size of your document. So you want it to be maybe, no, that's probably a bit too thick compared to it. Oops, wrong way. So that would probably be the thick, that's probably how thick you'd want it at the thickest part. So I'll just give you an example of what I'm going to be doing with it. Um, so let's go here and see how it goes lighter here and then it stops there that's where you'd have the reflection sort of thing so this bit all all of this bit here is quite light so we'll probably start around here just click and drag anywhere it doesn't necessarily matter as long as you, cause you can go back and change this anyway so that looks about fine there and what you're going to do is right click stroke path and this might already be on pencil by default so come down and select brush and then hit simulate pressure then press OK, and now as you can see, it creates this. Oh, let's delete the path. Right click and delete path afterwards. And as you can see, it creates this nice little sort of like shine on it. And then once you've added all of these in onto the same layer, once you've added them all across the whole thing, all you're going to do is come up to the top and go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Oops, don't put it up that high. And just knock it down a little bit so it's, it's quite faded out. Right. And as you can see, that part there already looks much better than the rest of it. So obviously, once you've gone through and added it all, you'll get this sort of look. Oop, that's very pixelated. You get this sort of look. And the next stage from here, what I like to do is to add shadows to the other letters. So the serif underneath, there'll be shadows cast onto this from the over, from where the type overlays it. So what you're going to do here is create another layer, and this one's going to go under the orange type, but over the white type. So what you're going to do is hold command and press the T symbol here on the type underneath. You're going to hit the B tool to get your brush out. Hit B on the keyboard, sorry. Right click, turn the hardness down to zero. Make the brush size fairly big, so that's probably way too big. Knock it down a bit. And then we're going to go up to the opacity at the top here. And then we're going to drop this down to about, say about 30. Say about 40, so let's put that to 40. And the flow will do the same with that, put that to 42. Not 42, but actually 40. Um, and then you kind of come to your brush. Make sure you've got a fairly dark colour selected, so like a very dark grey. And all you're going to do is start painting in the shadows. So make that a bit smaller using the square brackets on your keyboard. You can adjust the size. So what we're going to do is slowly start painting in and just holding on. Don't, don't let go of it. So you, the first one that you're going to do is going to come a bit further down. And then the second one you do is going to come up not as far. And then the last one's going to slightly just poke out. So as you can see, you get this nice little gradient shadow. And again, once you've added that to all of it, you can come up to your blend mode up here. And you can drop this down. And I think what I used was hard light. Or I think it might have been hard light. I think it might have been hard light, yeah. 
So once you've gone through and added the shadows to all the parts where it overlaps, like so there'd be a shadow here, there'd be a shadow underneath here, shadow there, shadow there. So you have to just go through, add all your shadows, add all the highlights. And then from this point, what you can then start to do is experiment with different colors on your actual type. So you're gonna click onto your actual type layer here. And for the, for the sake of this, I'm just gonna duplicate it so I've, already, so I've always got the original layer underneath. I've always got that there. So we've got, we'll just experiment on this layer. So what we're gonna do is hit Command U or Control U if you're on PC. And what you can do is it, you can just simply either mess about with the hue and saturation up here and change the color that way. But if you want a gradient like this that I've got at the top, I'm just going to put the saturation down to zero, press OK. And then I'm gonna to come to Effects at the bottom, Gradient Overlay. And you wanna make sure you've got the blend mode on this set to overlay so that you can actually see it and it, so it brings through the detail as well so it looks 3D still. And as you can see over here now where that shine was that I added, now it's more visible because of the actual color. You can see the difference that it actually makes to the type. So this, you can mess about with all these, the angle of the gradient, of course, whichever way you want it. Change the gradient to whatever colors you want. So uh, let's, just, let's just throw some different colors in it quickly. So that looks kind of similar, I suppose. And what you can do then is just hit OK. And then what I like to do is to add a little bit of noise to it. It just seems to give it a bit more of a realistic look. So I go to filter at the top, noise, and then add noise. Oops, bring that over to the side a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is bring that down to maybe about three. Um, Gaussian uniform. Keep it on uniform and make sure you have monochromatic ticks, which will just make it so it's not like different colored pixels. Like, you can't really tell anyway, but yeah, you can. Right, so I'm just put it at about three, and again, this will this will depend on the size of your document and how much it will actually show up. So let's go down to yeah, about there, about 2.38. Hit OK. So now it just has a bit more of a gritty feel to it. Another thing which I like to do from here as well is to expect the further experiment with the colors. You have to first right click on this, right click on the layer, sorry, and then convert to smart. No, not convert, rasterize layer style. Sorry, that's the one. And I'm just going to quickly duplicate this so I've got a backup layer in case I mess up on anything. Come to image, adjustment, colour lockup, and now you can just start going through these. And as you can see, they do have drastically different um, effects on the type. So like this one, let's see what that does. So let's turn the original one on back behind it. And as you can see, turning the layer on and off, you can see it just gives it a bit more contrast and it shows these uh, sort of dark, vari dark areas a little bit better. And obviously once you've got your shadow in and your highlights across the whole type and not just on one letter like this it's going to look a lot better so that's pretty much it guys that's how you create this interlace sort of lettering style which i've been putting on instagram recently uh, let me know if this tutorial has helped you and of course let me know what other tutorials you want to see and by all means if you post any anything that you've learned from this tutorial on social media feel free to tag me in it so yeah thank you very much for watching guys and i'll see you soon